Director of Public Interest Programs um, in the Career Office at Hastings, and I'm joined here by the H12 Club Presidents, uh, Jesse Casella and Krista Grinan. So I want to also thank H12 for putting on this amazing spread. So let's get started. Okay. So I'm going to go through some quick slides about summer funding and then go into <coughs> a couple of PIPS day nuances before I turn it over to Linda Pisassi from Financial Aid. who's going to talk to you about. Um, other options to sort of support your summer career. Um, but for now, let's just go right into some of the, the options that you have. So I wanted to highlight the one place you should always go and visit for all things public interest, which is psjv.org. It's a really great uh, resource for anyone interested in public interest and government jobs to find out different options in terms of summer funding, postgraduate work, government information, um, anything public interest related. Um, I just pulled out some of the, the more popular um, fellowships that are available to you, and I just thought I'd go through some of them really quickly. Um, the first is Equal Justice America. Last year, eight Hastings students uh, received funding from them, and they're basically focused on direct services to the poor um, in a civil setting, and you must secure full-time work for at least 10 hours per week, um, at minimum. It requires two letters of recommendations, resume, a letter from the employer confirming that you have um, work with them, and a cover letter that's more of a statement of interest. Um, and if you get work study from school, Equal um, Justice America will pay a portion of the employer portion. So the way that works is, anytime you get a work study award from financial aid, the employer has to pay 40% of that. So if you have an Equal Justice America grant, as well as work study, they don't give you like the full amount, um, they work with the work study amount and, and compile something for you. And I can go into that in a little bit more detail, it can be a little bit more nuanced. Um, so that's a really great funding option, um, and they can give you anywhere from uh, about, I think up to $4,000 in, in funding for that. So if you were to get a work-study award from financial aid for, say, $3,000, um, you would get that through financial aid, but then Equal Justice America would pay $1,200 instead of giving you a $3,000 grant. Because the reason that they do that is they want to make sure the money goes far and it gets stretched to all people in need. So you get, you know, a nice award for the summer. Um, the next one is Equal Justice Summer Corps. And they pretty much every year give about 700 grants. And they're about um, uh, 75 per grant. Um, you also have to provide direct services to low income and underserved communities. And they won't pay you a cash grant. The money that they give you really goes for a scholarship or to pay down your law school loan. So that's something to keep in mind. So if you need like money right away, remember that might be you might need to look for other funding. That might be good for you know paying down a summer loan or anything that you took out. Uh, the National Lawyers Guild Barry Chapter Thomas Steele Internship is also a really fantastic um, fellowship. They give you five thousand dollars. It's a ten weeks um, is the work that they require you to do. And February two thousand fourteen is roughly around the time that they. Um, accept applications. So now in February, they haven't posted their most recent one on the website, so you might want to go and take a look and check it out. By the way, I'm going to uh, email everyone who's on RSVP this um, PowerPoint so you'll have all of these. You don't have to feel the need to write it all down. If for some reason you didn't RSVP, you can just email me at abdullahuzhastings.edu and I will email it to you. Um, okay, so bar associations. So a lot of people don't think of bar associations as a really good option for your summer funding opportunities, but they're really quite fantastic. And a lot of minority bar associations also have funding options. And so you must be thinking, well, I'm not a minority, I can't apply. It doesn't matter. It's the, the population that you're serving, um, which is really what they're looking for. So for example, there's an Asian American Bar Association pretty much in every large municipality. There's one in um, based here in uh, San Francisco Bay Area, and there's one in Silicon Valley. They both have separate fellowship opportunities if you're doing work in Asian American communities. La Raza is fantastic. 
Um, Bailiff is great. Bailiff and Laraza have one together if you want to work for the LGBT community. Um, so those are really good options for you. A lot of times people don't think of those. So definitely check out some of the minority bar associations. Um, another way to find out about that stuff is anytime something comes up, there's a couple ways that we get that out. If it's a government public interest opportunity, we put it on the government public interest listserv. So if you're not on it, it's time to join. Hastings Careers Online is also where it ends up. If you have your diverse candidate or have a diverse background, we also post that on the diversity listserv. Um, but once again, remember to keep that in mind. If you see something from a minority bar association, you don't feel like you're from that population, don't write it off. Um, definitely keep up and take a look. Large law firms also offer diversity fellowships, but they're sort of far and few between. They're mostly focused on diverse candidates. Um, one of those is Goodwin Proctor. They have, have one for some, anyone who falls into, under the umbrella of diversity. And it can be really broad. It can be racial diversity, LGBT. It can be people with um, uh, disabilities. And it can be people who um, came from economic adversity. So definitely check out the, the definition of what those are before you also make a decision whether they're applicable to you or not. Um, okay, so once again, don't forget about Hastings Careers Online. It's a great place to find some of this information. And all these different fellowships ask for different things. Some of them will say, hey, send me a cover letter. Some of them will say, hey, write me a statement of interest. And sometimes it's a little unclear what it is. So think about it this way, when you're applying Usually we say less is more in a cover letter, but more, you know, going into more details about why you want to work with this population, you know, what really floats your boat, why you want to be a public interest person or government <coughs> person really goes the distance with these. So make sure that you have a good story. Um, people want to see why you want to do this type of work and, and what really, why you feel passionate about this. So keep that in mind. If you feel like, oh, I'm not really sure if I should write about this topic, come and see us. We'll talk to you about it. We'll work through it. And I work through with people all the time every year on some of these statement of interest. Okay? Um, the other thing you might think of is, oh, man, this is so much work. But remember, you do one statement of interest, you can tweak it for the fellowship, you know, from fellowship to fellowship. So it's worth the time that you might put into it. Here are a few more um, that are kind of interesting. Um, the Dan Bradley Summer Fellowship is great. It's for... Um, um, it comes from uh, LAC and other partner organizations, so it's basically legal aid in California. Um, and it's a great way to see not only what that fellowship would go for, but their partner organizations. It's anyone in sort of the legal aid umbrella, which is fantastic. Last year's deadline was March 29th. They've not posted their most recent one yet. Um, but you can take a look um, and see, you know, keep checking back on the website. Judge Tagasugi also is fantastic. Um, that's one of the few fellowships that actually supports PD positions. Um, there's not a whole lot with government organizations. Most fellowships out there are public interest focused. This is one of the few that supports PD populations. So definitely check it out. And they fund up to $5,000, which is great. Um, the only catch with that is you have to work in San Francisco um, or LA areas. And last year was also March 2014 was their deadline, but they don't have the most recently <coughs> posted. Okay, Miss JD Public Interest Fellowship is another one that's one of the few, it's not, I didn't post it up here, but it's one of the few that actually will give you uh, a stipend for having a judicial externship. First, so some of you may be applying for judicial externship. It's about $500, and they expect you to maybe write a, their statement of interest is basically social justice lawyering and public interest lawyering, your thoughts on it, why it's important. And then they require you to just you know, update and write for their blog over the summer. What's nice about that is it's something you can put on your resume, something that you did in addition to working all summer. Um, and, and they have you know, topics that you want to write about, so that's kind of nice. Okay, so um, also the Legal Aid Society um, Employment Law Center, a lot of people don't know if they apply for a fellowship, they actually do a matching grant of up to $3,200. So some of you might be applying for them through uh, PIPS day, you might be applying them through other options, but that's actually a nice way to get matching grants. So whatever money you come up with, they'll match up to 3200 um, which is really also fabulous. Um, so Hastings International Law Stipend, um, Professor Basel will uh, talk about that when he comes. American Bar Association, this year they're offering one fellowship. 
is the ABA Commission on Homelessness and Poverty, and it's a 2500 grant for eight weeks of continuous work. So once again, it must be either an organization run through a bar association or a legal services organization. Um, and it basically must serve people who are either homeless or at risk of becoming homeless. Um, in the past, they used to have a fellowship in environmental law. Last year, they didn't offer it. A year before, they did offer it. They're still trying to decide in terms of funding if they're going to continue offering that or not in the future. But it's something to keep in your back pocket for next year if it's something that interests you. So before I turn it over to Linda to talk to you about some funding, I uh, just want to talk to you a little bit about PIPS Day, just kind of touch on it. So this Friday you're going to find out if you got an interview or not, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, and the 29th is your last day to cancel that interview if that's something that you don't want. You'll also find out if you've been listed as an alternative. So for example, you weren't their first choice, maybe your second choice, maybe they wanted you, but they wanted other people as well. Um, and on the 30th you'll find out um, if in fact, you were selected. So keep checking your email, keep checking your Hastings account. Any information about that's going to come through um, more justice. They're going to be in contact with you about it. Also, there's a library section um, when you log into the PIPS Day system with any updates. Just kind of check that in case they have information they want um, to get out to you. If it's something really pressing, I'll definitely email all of you guys, but um, just keep that in mind. If you have good questions about PIPS Day interviews, whatnot, you can either go online, make an appointment with us for a 45-minute appointment, but we also have drop-ins every day, 3.15 to 4.30. It's a great place to come and ask quick questions. Um, and we do mock interviews, too, even though the mock interview sign-ups have been filled, but we individually as counselors can do mock interviews for you as well. Um, so these are just the dates. Um, if you don't get in, you don't despair. It's competitive. There's nine schools. The employers want to be fair. I think I've said that before. Just, you know, don't take it personal. And there's lots of different ways around it. Um, remember, if you're, you know, an alternative under pending status, the employer may still choose you. There's always table talks. Some of the employers that are interviewing are at table talks. It's a great opportunity to go and talk them up. Bring your resume and cover letter and say, hey, you know, I didn't get an interview, but this is an organization I really feel strongly about. I'd love to come work for you um, and just have that um, conversation. Also, remember open slots um, are another really great way. So people who had an interview, didn't show up, called in sick, something happened, great way to pick up an interview. So the one thing to keep in mind is the best time to kind of get in line is around 7.50 in the morning. I know it's early, it's painful, it's a Saturday, but you want to be like the first one in that open slots line if you can be. You have to go through student registration, everyone does. But then you guys know how to get to the gold reading room fast because that's where the open slots are. Also remember the afternoon is a great time to come and pick up slots. There's slots open all the time that people just don't think of, like a home or whatnot. So that's also a good place to pick up an, um, an interview. Okay, so once again, you must, must, must cancel your interview. No later than 5 p.m. on the 29th. If you don't cancel, there are some consequences to that. Um, so, you know, to prepare for your interview, lots of different ways. Um, you can look on summer surveys on Hastings Careers Online, contact your fellow classmates who've actually worked with those organizations, call them up and say, hey, how was it? You know, don't forget Google, find out anything you can about the organization, read the website, read the bios, dig around, press releases. The more you kind of know or have an understanding of what they're about, the easier the interview process is going to go. Also, know your resume. Really take a look and read past jobs that you've had, volunteer work. People tend to forget what they did a couple years ago, but anything you've sent in is very game for them to ask you about. So make sure you go over it and review it. Um, NELP.org is also a great resource. Um, there's two webinars that they did last year. One was on you know, your written application materials for public interest jobs, and the other one was for interview skills. So what I'll do is when I send this out to you guys, I'll send you a link to those. There, you can watch them anytime. Just log on and watch them. Okay, so what happens if you don't cancel your interview in time? You're going to have to write a letter of apology to our um, assistant dean, Sarah Zimmerman, as well as the employer. And you just don't want to be in that position because it's just not good for you, it's not good for Hastings, and it's just overall not fun. So just if you're going to cancel, something's going to happen, go ahead and let one just know right away. If it's like the day of something horrible happens, once again, email one justice right away. Calling me is not necessarily going to help. I'll be somewhere on campus running frantically around trying to prepare. I may not get your 
contact enough time and not, may not be able to solve things in enough time, but there's someone checking email constantly. So make sure you get that um, information out when something happens. Okay, so can you apply to employers outside of PIPS Day? Yes, I think I mentioned that in past workshops. Definitely, definitely, it's not a bar to you. Uh, what I definitely suggest students do is that whatever the first cover letter was or the application that you sent off, the second one just say, hey, by the way, I sent, I applied to you earlier and I'm applying to you through PIPS Day or I applied through PIPS Day and I'm applying again. And the same reasons, touch why you're passionate and committed <coughs> about this employer because that's at the end of the day what the employers want. They're not so focused on your brains. They're not so focused on you know, your status of where you are, where you're in school necessarily. Public interest people really want to see committed people. So if you're diehard, this is where you want to be, let them know. Okay, um, okay so once again, the employers are coming to table talks. Table talks every year are how people pick up interviews, people pick up jobs. So bring your tailored cover letter, your resume, and make sure you have a conversation with people. Um, think about your elevator pitch, bring extra materials, that's always gonna be in your favor. Okay, dress professionally on PIPS Day. Every year employers complain to us, saying, oh my goodness, some of the students, what were they wearing? You don't wanna be in that position, and, and you don't wanna be a business person in that position. Um, bring your interview schedule with you. In past years, they used to print it in a nice little binder up there, so if you didn't have it, they would look it up for you. It just became too, it started to be too amorphous for the one just staff to do, so now they're really saying, hey, print out your interview schedule. Um, also bring extra copies, resume, cover letter, um, grade sheet, list of references. <coughs> when you apply for a job, you do not submit your references at that time. It's usually after an interview, the employer will come, they'll ask you for that. So um, they might, you know, you might, if you have with you, the interview goes well, you might be like, oh, would you like to see my references? Or, you know, at that point would be a good time for that. Um, okay, so once again, table talks, where are they? So public interest employer table, for table talks are going to be the L LVML, and the government ones are going to be the ARC in the 200 building. So people get confused about that every year. Okay, um, yeah, so we already talked about the open slots. All right, so this year, last year, Equal Justice Works actually came and um, had a presentation during sort of like the lunch dead hour. Uh, it's gonna be in room A again this year. I don't know if any two of are in the house who went last year, but we got really good feedback. And it's nice because they touch on a lot of different options. They talk about you know, how you're going to pay back your loans. They talk about what options are available to you. They talk about postgraduate public interest fellowships, which we're going to have an event about that in March that I want all of you to come um, come to. And that's something that they'll touch on. They'll give you sort of an intro. So whatever you do that day in between interviews, maybe you don't have interviews, whatever, just come to this thing. You can bring your lunch. You can hang out there while that's happening. Some of you are interested in LA, Southern California. Southern California UCLA also has a career fair. I mentioned that before. You can't apply to them formally, but you can go to their table talks. Okay. Um, all right, so I'm going to turn this over to Linda to talk to you about financial aid options for the summer. But she's going to talk to you. Linda, you can come up. She can talk to you about um, work study. Uh, she can, she's going to talk to you about the summer loan program, which is sort of a new program they're launching this year, and also what it means to get financial aid when you take uh, summer classes. There you go. Thank you. I don't know if I actually need this, but I'll take it. Uh, hi. Nice room of people. You know, about half, half full. That's great. It's great to see all of you. The one thing that I'm going to talk about primarily, start out with, is the work study. And the reason that this program is such a, um, a boon, really, to public interest employers is because the federal government will pay most of your wages. When you work for a nonprofit, they only have to pay 25% of your wages. If it's on campus, it's 25% of your wages, and that's it. The government will pay 75%. If it's off campus, a nonprofit, um, the employer will pay 25% of your wages and an additional 15% fee. But the federal government still will pay 75% of your wages. So many of the nonprofit organizations actually don't have funding to hire people. And the only way they can hire a person is if a person has work study. So I encourage you, when you're applying, right now is the time, when you're filling out your financial aid supplement, 
this is the time to be doing that. You should have gotten an email from our office uh, a week or so ago reminding you that it is time to apply for financial aid for next year. And part of that process is the financial aid supplement, and part of the supplement is to apply for work study. The work study is part of your next year's financial aid package, but the advantage is it's the only federal program where you actually get to have the money before the academic year starts. So you earn it, you earn it during the summer working for an employer, and um, it is part of your next year's financial aid package, but it's not a loan, which means you don't have to pay it back. It isn't accruing interest. It, they, are, they are wages that you work for and earn, and then you can spend it however you need to um, in the summer or save it over part of it um, for the academic year. One thing to keep in mind is that because it is part of your academic year financial aid package, you are getting it early and you may be spending part of it, so that might make you a little short for the academic year, but if, um, but we can talk about that and the students who do this, <coughs> and we have students of course that do it every summer, um, are still able to manage to live on the budget that we have for them. We typically give people $5,000 in work study just out the gate, um, and that's an amount that you can earn over the summer and throughout the next academic year. So you'll get that is available to you beginning um, June 1st, and you can earn it from June 1st all the way through uh, the end of the academic year, and that would be 15, 14, 15. Any questions about work study? Have you had worse? Yes. Um, work study like needs to do like mainly on campus stuff. I'm not exactly sure how it works with an outside employer. Like, do, are they, do you have like a list of employers that it works for? Is it any nonprofit? Can you make an arrangement once you get the package? Or? Um, yeah, we, you can come talk to us. We do have a list. Um, we don't publish it because not everybody signs up again every year. There is a set of paperwork that the employer has to complete in order to be part of the program every year and they have to re-up every year. But our list would show you the people who are presently on it or who were on it last summer. And um, it would also show you people who have been on it in the past. So even though they're not on it presently, you may be able to talk to them and have them do the paperwork. Uh, as I said, most of the nonprofit organizations want to hire people with work study and can't do it any other way. So we're happy to talk to you if you want to look over the list and come see us. Um, and it might give you some encouragement. And even yes. if they're not on the list, just always ask the employer. You never know mm -hmm. where they are. They could be, this could be the first year they're doing it. The other thing that you should know is um, that if you are press, even though you won't have gotten your award letter by the time that you're going uh, interviewing with people or meeting with employers, you should know that if you are on financial aid, federal, if you qualify for federal financial aid this year, you will qualify for work study next year. It is the, it can be, and, and most generally is, the first piece of your financial aid, federal financial aid package. So um, you can sort of just have that in your back pocket when you go to meet with somebody. If they ask you if you're work study eligible, you know you are if you're on financial aid this year. Or you might even say that to them, I'm work study eligible. You know, are you on the work study program with Hastings, or would you like to be? And then you can actually have them contact me directly if you want. Linda Bassessi in financial aid, or Victor Ho, you probably know Victor in financial aid. Yes? I'm really confused on what you said about it being $5,000, like, out of your package, but you're getting it early. Um, can you clarify that? Yes. Um, you will have a financial aid package next year that is comprised of the amount of your tuition and fees, so 47000 whatever that is, plus a living budget, which is about twenty three five, something like that. And um, so out of that budget, we subtract your expected contribution, which is the federal <coughs> number, and then you are actually, and most of you will qualify up to probably the 70000 or so in need-based aid, which work study is a need-based aid program. But you would, uh, we would subtract out any grant that you might be receiving, any scholarship that you might be receiving, and then the next component in the package would be the work study. We typically give five thousand, but you don't. If you don't earn the five thousand, you can decline it any time during the academic year, and have it replaced with loan if you want. 
Um, or if you need more, if you're in a situation where the employer can actually hire you, maybe hired you in the summer, wanted to keep you throughout the year, and you earn the 5000 that we gave you, you can come in and talk to us. We can adjust your loans down. If, you're, if you've maxed out your financially packaged, taken all the financial aid you're eligible for, we would, might have to swap it out and give you more work study and decline some of your loans. Um, so there are ways to work within that. So the $5,000 is just something that we found is adequate most of the time for most people. Um, so that's kind of what we automatically give people. But it is, yes, it does come out of your academic year package. So the other side of that coin would be if you didn't take work study for the summer or if you didn't use it for the summer, it's available for you during the academic year. And if for some reason John at the end of getting doesn't do work study, you can have that replaced as the $5,000 loan? Yes. At any time? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anything else? About that? Okay, I just want to make sure I hit all my points. Okay, then the next thing, um, make sure I hit all your points. <laughs> She's right about the wages and so forth. Okay, so the Summer uh, Public Interest Employment Loan. This is a new program for us, and it came about about two years ago. The way it works is that uh, folks who apply for the HPOF grant um, and who end up not getting it for one reason or another, um, the the um, Student Services Office will give us, financial aid, a list of the names of the folks who did not get the grant, and then I will solicit you or, or uh, send you an email with this loan application attached. And what it is, is it's an option for people who did not qualify for the HPL grant. They can get a $4,000 loan instead. The loan is from Hastings. It does have an interest rate attached to it. It is 5% interest, but no interest accrues while you're in school. And there is a nine-month grace period. It's very similar to the Perkins program. We've sort of modeled it after that. So the so a positive about this is that although um, it is it would, down the line, accrue interest after you graduate nine months after, you can take out that loan and, and at the end of your... Um, time at Hastings, if you pay back that loan in full, you get a windfall or pay it back quickly, um, you won't be charged interest on it. So one way to look at it is that you do have this period of time, this nine months, when you are getting settled, you're studying for the bar, you pass the bar, you're getting settled, but um, you can pay back this loan any time early and save interest on it. And it, it is a credit-based loan, so fiscal services will do a credit check on you. But it is an option for people who don't get the HPL grant. Questions about that? So you, you might hear from me in, with an email with this uh, application attached. You can decline it or you can apply for it. It's up to you. If you do choose to decline it, I'd appreciate it if you let me know because I have a, a certain budget and I, will, I might send the application out to 20 people, but if there are actually 30 on the list, and you're not going to take advantage of it, then I'd like to offer it to the next 10 down the list. So just keep that in mind. And then uh, summer school. Yes? The public and would it lower the financial No, it doesn't. Because we're just giving it to you for summer. One thing to keep in mind that we're getting ready to talk about summer school. You cannot get the Hastings loan, this, this employment loan, and take summer classes. You have to choose one or the other. Because for summer, Classes, you would get this typical financial aid, federal financial aid. Yes? When would we find out about either the age 12 grant or our eligibility for this loan? We're going to talk about that in the next oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Find out about the loan shortly there after, after her speech. Um, so, summer school. Um, a lot of people finance their summers by going to summer school at Hastings or somewhere else, but now Hastings has a lot of um, offerings in the summer, so many of our students stay right here and take classes here. You have to be at least half-time in order to get federal financial aid for summer. Half-time in the summer is three units during either one of the summer sessions. So you could take three units in both sessions, or you could take 
three units and one or the other. Your living expenses um, are prorated based on the, the enrollment period. So if you're in one session, then we would give you a prorated summer living uh, expense package that would include that period of time, that first session or the second session. Um, one thing that I have seen um, that happens regarding summer is that it is great. You do get kind of an edge getting some coursework done that you might not otherwise have done, of course, until the academic year. But one thing to keep in mind is that um, it often, it isn't enough for you to complete a whole semester. So many students end up increasing their debt in some ways by going to summer school because you still have to go um, the full full six semesters most of the time in order to finish your degree. So just keep that in mind. But it, it would lighten your load if you took some summer school. And there is financing to do it. Most of the time it would come in the form of the graduate plus loan, which most of you have in your financial aid package. Questions about summer school <coughs> financing? Okay. Uh, again, Linda Bassesi, 200. Room 275, I'm happy to talk with you anytime. The other folks in my office that can talk to you about this too would be Rosanna Woods and Victor Ho. Thank you, Linda. I really appreciate it. I'm going to turn it over to um, Jesse and Krista to talk about the age program. That's a pretty big place. Do I have to do Can you guys hear me in the back? Do I need to use the mic? I have a loud voice. Um, <laughs> So Chris and I are HPO uh, co-presidents. Obviously, we've seen many of you several times this year. Um, so we're going to talk about the HPO grant. Also, quick pitch for the gala. Shame, not a shame to do so. Um, our gala will be on February 27th, um, which is a Thursday at 7 o'clock. This relates to this topic because this is where we raise the majority of the money for the HPO grants. So the more people that come to the gala, the more people that participate in our live and silent auctions, and you know, auction those items really high, the more grants we can have. So come, bring your friends, bring your non-friends, whatever. Bring um, non-law school friends, friends who bring actually make money. Friends. That would be bring friends who make money. Um, yes, please. So Mark is in your calendar. Obviously, H Pope will be doing a big push, uh, campaign push for this. We also have great auction items like uh, signed SF Giants baseball. Brandon right, Bell has signed a baseball. We will have a warrior signed basketball. We will have trips. We will have dinners with professors. You name it. We'll Other have it. nights. Lots of really fun stuff. It's honestly just a fun event period, and the auction items are great. So come. Um, so this is, if you guys haven't been on our H12 version of the website, uh, or on the school website, you can go um, up in the search box here, you just type in Hastings Public Interest Law Foundation, this page pops up. Um, so this is where you can find information about the grant. So here is the application and timeline from last year. We we're in the process of updating it for this year, but it will follow pretty much the same timeline and such as last year. And since you're still figuring out your job, don't worry, you're not running late at all, and they're going to be considered all at the same time. So don't be in a rush, and yeah, just worry about getting your job sorted. So so that means that you need to have a job first before you can apply for the h grant. So, and this will, will, this is the balancing game that we play, where right? we wait for it to be late enough where y'all have jobs, but early enough that you are securing your funding. So we will probably follow a similar timeline to this somewhere around mid-March. The uh, grant applications will be due. Um, and then sometime around, let's see, April, mid-April, the grant advance will be announced. Um, again, these, will, these dates will be updated probably next week um, for this year. Let me just go back to this. Um, so questions about the timeline? Again, it'll be here. Yes? I was looking at it the other day. Is it going to change too much this year? It should be pretty much the same. Okay. Um, <coughs> this is last year's, to speak on your point. Um, so pretty much requires your general information. This is the cover letter. Um, there will be an employer information sheet, which is here. So you need a personal statement, which is about four pages. Um, the grant itself is a $4,000 grant, so unlike the work study where you kind of work towards it over time, it'll be a grant that will be distributed in the beginning of summer. Um, so we ask for a personal statement, we ask for information about 
and the personal statement talk about where you're working, why you're interested in public interest, your commitment to public interest law over time. All this information is in the application. Um, there's your resume that we asked for. And then this is the employer information sheet. So you just need some you know, general information from your employer <coughs> on what's happening. But like, like we earlier said, HPO pays the full $4,000 grant amount. If you are receiving some kind of outside funding, we will ask you to talk about that as well in your personal statement. This will likely you know, decline the amount that HPILF gives you only so that we can have more people get HPILF money. And keep in mind that, um, sorry, and then I'll get to your question in a sec, but if you get multiple grants, which is totally possible, you can get them from a couple different organizations, they're going to cap how much you can combine. So you will have to give a certain money back if you've gotten multiple. And their websites will tell you how much they cap it at. So be aware of that. Was there a question in the back? Yeah, so if I wanted to use the April grant to be able to consider uh, unpaid internships instead of having to limit myself to paid internships, if you, I have to have it lined up before I apply, so I have to take an unpaid internship and then hope to get the grant? Or yeah, yes. I don't know. And, and part of the reason why there's that loan program is so that people who do, you know, decide to take those unpaid internships can also get funding for the public interest loan program through the school. May I jump in? You should always accept one of those opportunities contingent upon funding, which is completely appropriate, and almost every PIPS day employer expects that. They understand that you're going to be applying to these grants and trying to line things up, so just ask them how much time they need. They can also help you write your grant proposal, etc. So, yeah. Yeah, and most other fellowship opportunities have the same type of situation. They want you to have your job first, and they all know it's contingent upon funding. And usually they all kind of you know you're going to bootstrap them together and they work things out. So it's just, it's like a fluid situation. So apply for everything. You don't feel like, oh, well, I applied for one grant and I'm just going to wait. No, apply for every single one and then decide when you get them. Um, we will, I think, again, similar to last year, have it be turned in hard copy. So all of this done is, not, is done anonymously. We don't know who's applying. We may be applying to. It, they're, they're read by 3Ls and, uh, and alum, and all of the applications are anonymous in that sense. So we ask that you turn in hard copies of the application, which is online, um, to student services. And then they will strip all the names, just do student ID numbers, and then we'll have them read by our 3L friends and alumni and, and such. Um, Questions. I know that was kind of. Yes. Um, do they care more about what kind of job it is? What are they looking for? Is it the grant? Typically, we're looking for commitment to public interest law, a job that obviously promotes public interest law. Um, I mean, passion on why you want to work in public interest. Those are. I mean, those are the general things. Um, the more passion you can show, and the more you can show your commitment to your summer position, the better. Um, it is a pretty competitive process only because a lot of people apply and we can only give as many grants as we have the funding for. So last year there were 13 grant recipients like out of 85 applications. So don't be discouraged by that. That just means please apply. And like Linda was saying, you know, the people who don't get the grant will then be next on the list for the loan. And that's but, also why you should apply to multiple. I right. actually, ironically enough, did not get an h full grant last summer. So, but I got an Equal Justice America grant and it worked out just fine for me. So apply to multiple. Um, other questions about the grant? This year we're hoping to have more than 12. We're working towards that number quickly. But like we said, the gala is our main source of fundraising. We've been fundraising and people have been donating already. but. <clears throat> For, come to the gala, donate some money, <laughs> auction some items. Other questions, H12 grant? And you can always contact us. Our contact information is on the website here or h at uchastings.edu that is checked as well. Uh, my email is up there if you want any perspective on applying for Equal Justice America. Um, like Bruce had already said, it really is basically a public, public statement of interest. 
mine who was like two pages last year, you really need to lay into your background, um, why you're interested in public interest. They want to make sure, kind of like our H12 grant, that this isn't just a, oh, I can get like a paid job over summer, but it's something you're actually really dedicating yourself to. And so you really need to learn how to sell yourself. And so, yeah, hopefully I can help you out with that if you have any interest. I did work, work study last summer. If you guys have any questions, I'm happy to talk to you about that as well. Thanks. So now I'm going to just turn it over to Professor Boswell, who is the Dean um, of Global Programs, and he's going to come and talk to you about the International Summer Stipend as well. Thank you. Thank you. So then I didn't hear you, but if not, yeah. this is a little poem. Sorry, I came in late, so I missed um, some of what was said here. Um, and I'll just be very brief because we don't have a lot of time. I um, just want to talk to you just very briefly about the summer opportunities for international opportunities in the summer. Um, there are two, two broad categories that I want to mention. Uh, one of them is through an arrangement that we've made with a local international consulting firm which is based here in San Francisco, which sends students out to other countries and will pay for their living expenses, uh, transportation, and we supplement that with uh, some grants. Um, and we have probably sufficient money. It's very difficult to say. You know, I know that's one of the questions that you're going to be asking is, uh, how many of these are there going to be? Um, they tend to fill them in numbers of total three to five in any given summer. Uh, and we will su support, but we can't say exactly how much money that will be, but it will help to defray some of your other expenses since you're not getting any money for salary. They're providing you money for living expenses, <coughs> food, lodging, transportation, and we would supplement that with some additional funds. So it might be equivalent to what you would be getting in uh, one of the other summer uh, grant programs. So that's one category, which is more in the uh, development, international development field. The other one is that there's a more open uh, grant program that we have for uh, also a limited number of People, probably maybe 10 of these we might get a grant, maybe a little bit less. I can't be precise on the numbers because it's about the, the amount of funds versus the number of students who apply and the competitiveness of, of each of these. And that's anything in the general um, international, um, what we call public sector, public interest uh, field. Uh, the last one is that there uh, you should if you are looking for a summer opportunity in the internship kind of category, we have money to support a travel grant uh, because one of these would be in, uh, with a firm in Asia and you would need to talk to Professor Hand about that um, so that if you are, have an interest in international and with a particular focus, and I believe it's in, I think the program is in China, but I'm not precisely sure but you would need to talk to Professor Hand about that. We are also looking into other opportunities. We've reached out to our alums who do international work to identify um, international opportunities that might be available during the summer so that, uh, and some of those might, uh, some of those would, would be funded. We don't have commitments yet on that, so we're looking to identify additional opportunities for, for our students. So those are the broad categories that I can describe. Um, they amount to maybe a total slots of 10, 12 or so that would be either fully, partially funded by, by the law school. So, any questions about that? You can, uh, we have an application deadline I should point, you know, let you know about that, which is on March the 25th. Um, and if you go to the Global Programs website, you'll see this identified, it's under study abroad and other opportunities abroad where you'll see this information. There's an application form, it's going to be reviewed by, by, by a committee to determine, you know, which ones uh, 
should be funded in the <coughs> have a binder in our office, yeah. so one of the things that the stipend requires is you write an essay after your summer is over about what your experiences were like. Mm -hmm. So we have a binder of past essays that you can come take a look at. Um, and some of the people that, that did this program also stayed locally, which is worked on international right. issues. Um, so that's something to think about. You don't have to like get right. on a plane and go abroad. You can work on international issues here. So yeah. So you've probably heard about a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and I, I know from many years of reviewing like the HPIL uh, applications over the summer, they are, they are um, while they are competitive, um, also uh, keep in mind that one of the things I think that we're looking at, probably the same as also maybe to mention that obviously there's a, there's a postgraduate fellowship that we have uh, through HPIL, it's the Abascal Fellowship, and that's for, we, we do, we have one of those each year, uh, we've been now granting, and that's something that you should be thinking about too, as you're thinking about HPIL, think about it also for when, after you graduate, that there is at least one that the, that the law school is, uh, is supporting, and we hope to raise more money so that there'll be more of those. <coughs> But one of the things we, every, all of us are looking at, I think, in all these applications, um, maybe I shouldn't speak for, for, for HPIL. No, please do. But, but, but I think one of the things we're looking for is seriousness and that you've thought through what it is that you're talking about doing. Uh, not just saying that I'm going to do this and that you know, there's this opportunity, but if it looks like when comparing applicant A to applicant B, that applicant A has really thought through a plan for what they're going to do during the summer, that's real, then applicant A is more likely to, to, to get it. So just think that through when you're putting it together. You're not just slapping together an application because you've got one of 20 different things that you're submitting on. But you know, take it really seriously. It's not the end of the world either because there are lots of these that are on the So any questions in the remaining five minutes? channel and it's all the sessions that we've done on the APS day, anything public interest related as well as a bunch of other stuff. Um, and we try to take this is also going to be this has been taped today and it will be available I think in a week or, or tomorrow probably. Maybe tomorrow, mm -hmm. maybe tomorrow.